Hey Rovers, for those of you that have been watching Sailing Wave Rover now from the beginning, you know that this design, the Wave Rover 650, is likely to be the easiest to build and yet least expensive pocket cruiser you're likely to find. The Wave Rover 650, a design based on my single-handed ocean voyages. She's small, light, but easy to build and strong enough to cross any ocean. My name's Alan Mulholland, and this is the Wave Rover Story. Now, getting a small, ocean-capable pocket cruiser built in a timely fashion is as important to me as building it strong, and from what I've seen, probably the least expensive small boat build that you'll find on YouTube. Now that wasn't by accident. That was one of these things that when I came up with this concept and I approached the naval architect and I said to him that, look, we've got to make this simple because one of the, one of the dimensions of this project that I really wanted to happen was I wanted to empower the average person of of limited means and limited ability to be able to build one of these boats that you could take anywhere. Now, when I initially came up with the concept, of course, I knew that I'd be sailing it solo because simply Mrs. Rover, she doesn't like sailing. However, this boat isn't a solo person's boat. Sure, it can be sailed solo, but there's enough room here for two people to be able to do an ocean crossing. And that is one of the precepts that I have of what a pocket cruiser should be. It should be able to go anywhere. It should be able to cross an ocean. It should be able to carry a dinghy and it should be able to carry two people and be comfortable. You got to remember it's sailors. We're doing this for fun. You've got to think in terms of room to move around, to stand up, do all the things that you know you should be able to do. It's too many small boat designers, I think, have lost touch with that, and they've sort of considered the sailor to be nothing more than human baggage stuffed in, inclined, you know, in a little capsule. That's not what I had in mind, and that's not what we have here in the Wave Rover 650. But that's not what I really want to talk about today. What I want to talk about today is because we've kept it so simple, it means that we only need simple tools to be able to build this project. To that end, the, there are only six tools that you really need to be able to build this boat. I'm going to go over them and I'm going to put in a bonus tool at the end. So there will be seven. Now I'm going to give you options in those tools and tell you, show you my tools and tell you what's good about them and maybe what you should look for in tools. Bear in mind, none of these tools have been sponsored by the tool makers. These are tools generally that I've owned for a very long time and I, I feel confident in endorsing them because I've done so much with them other than just building this boat. Let's crack on now with the tool review. All right, my number one go-to tool, the tool I use more than any other tool, is the electric handsaw. So if you take a look at this, this is your typical handsaw right here, or if, you know, uh, well, from now on, I'm just going to call it a skill saw. That's what we've always called them. I know it's not a skill saw, but this blade you see, if you can take a look at it, that's a general purpose blade. It's good for cross cutting and good for ripping. Now, right beside it, so this, this is the tool you need and get yourself a good quality one. But this tool right here, it's really the same sort of saw other than the motor is here as opposed to this motor being on the side. What's the difference you might say? Well, this motor, doesn't actually connect directly to the arbor turning this blade. Instead, this motor goes to a worm drive, a piece of gearing, just like a, just like a table saw, and then turns a blade. Well, what's the difference? Well, the difference is this blade will not move. 
Now you might think this blade doesn't move either, but it does. You know, it's got the tiniest amount of wiggle because it's just magnets holding it in. So this is a superior tool. It's a lot more expensive. I have it because I've always had this. I love this saw. It's my number one favorite saw, but do you need it for the build? No. Uh, this is the tool you need. You can make do with this tool. Not make do. It's a great tool. The other thing I just want to bring your attention to, you'll see this blade has a lot more teeth than the other blade that we took a look at. And the reason is this blade is really good for cutting plywood. So it's, uh, it's kind of meant for plywood, but I mean, it's still going to rip. It's just not, if you were going to do a lot of ripping, change that blade up and put a ripping blade in. So that's my number one tool, is the, is the, the skill saw. So the number two tool you need, and really this is two tools, but you, you generally buy these as a set, and it's a drill and a driver. Now, uh, I'm showing you the cordless version. You can probably get a... Uh, electric version that would be even cheaper but the cordless version for drills I'd recommend that it's one of those things that you'll you won't regret now in this case uh, this drill it I think I got it in 2007 and this is the same I have two batteries and they're the same batteries the batteries aren't holding a charge as long as they did you know initially but they're still very, very serviceable. I mean, this is, uh, I always keep one battery uh, on the charger. I bring, I bring it out and change it up. So the drill is uh, something you use a lot for drilling holes to put the screws in. And then when it comes time to put the screw in, you could put it in with the drill, you know, just by taking this bit and putting it in there. But having a driver, an impact driver, which it, it hammers a little bit as it turns and it just makes your life so much easier. You don't have to put that force behind this to drive because of the impact uh, of, of this tool. So I highly recommend get yourself, you'll see these on sale. It doesn't have to be Makita. All the manufacturers put out these sets of drill and driver very well worth it. Of course, with the drill and driver, get yourself the bit index. Again, it doesn't have to be high quality. You can you can buy these on sale. I mean, it's practically twice a month these these bits go on sale at my local hardware store. Uh, you can and they're not expensive, not like they used to be. Now, back in the old days, we didn't have when I first started out that we didn't have these impact drivers. All we had were drills and we put bits into them and you'd have to get behind them to drive a long screw. You couldn't drive a screw over your head, not, not successfully, but with this, you can. At a very awkward angle, you can still drive a screw. Well worth it. So this is my number two. So number three is a sander. Now, I've got a collection of sanders here, but if you only are going to get one sander, Get yourself a palm sander and get yourself a name brand that you recognize. So this is a good sander. Uh, interesting story about this. The, um, the Velcro that holds the sanding pad on had worn out on me uh, right around the beginning of the project. So I didn't know. I thought, oh gosh, how much is that going to cost to replace that? So I just left it idle and I picked up this little Black & Decker on sale. And um, you can just see the size difference between the two. This is a much better tool than this one, in my opinion. Uh, but this was so cheap. I, I thought that replacing that pad would be really expensive. But then I went online just last uh, week and I saw it was like about six bucks US to buy this new black section right here that has the Velcro took a few seconds to put it on, and now my much better palm sander is back in business. So a little, uh, little thing I'm talking about or trying to tell you is, by buying a better tool, you'll have no problem getting replacement parts, and it just does a better job. So I'll probably be leaving this on the shelf from now on and switching back to my better tool. Now, this is the bare minimum. This is what you need. 
Now, this is a, uh, a belt sander, and a belt sander is an improvement on the palm sander in some cases. Like it spreads the, um, it spreads the surface area over a larger area. You're less likely to dig in and make a divot that you might do with this. So over a, a larger area, this would be a better tool. And then along the same lines, this tool right here, this isn't a grinder. It looks like a grinder, but it's not. This is a polisher. And I've had this tool since the first boat I built in the 90s. That's last century. And it's still going, well, it's going pretty strong. You can see I've got a little breakdown in the sponge area. I'm sure that's replaceable. Uh, but this does a marvelous job of flattening out a big area. So when the time comes to flatten this area out, this tool does a great job. Now, bear this in mind as well. These tools, this is the easiest to master. This is the most, this is the harder one to master. By that I mean this tool, when you're using it, is really good, it's controllable, it's in your hand, it's a small area, you're less likely to cut through the glass. This can cut through the glass really fast and this can really cut through the glass and get you down to wood in practically a, the blink of an eye. So this is not a tool to start with, this is a tool to finish with, and it's a tool to get confidence with, not starting on your boat, start somewhere else, start on a piece of wood, a piece of furniture, uh, you wanna re refinish, get some experience, and then try the boat. So that's tool number three. So tool number four, tool number four is the jigsaw. Uh, it's a tool that I love and hate. Um, and, and the reason uh, I love it is because it's the best tool for doing curves, tight curves. And I'll be using this tool uh, probably later today to start cutting the portholes out of, uh, of the Wave Rover 650. So best tool for that. Uh, why did I say I hate it? Because no matter what you do, this blade is unsupported. So when you go to make a tight circle, the blade has a tendency to not stay plumb up and down, but it tends to take a bit of a bend. So after you've got the hole cut, you're going to have to clean it up either with files or sandpaper to square it all off. But having said that, it still makes the grade. It is tool number four. It's uh, one of my favorites. Number five. So tool number five, the power planer. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I use this tool not a lot um, before the build, but during the build, I use this tool a lot. It's a great tool. It gets a lot of work done. It's adjustable, so you need to take a lot off, put it on an aggressive setting, get it down to, say, a sixteenth of where you want the finish to be, and then turn it really fine. This will take off a tiny amount of wood once you get it set. It's a really safe tool to operate, well, as long as you don't keep your hand somewhere in front of the blade, but you keep your hand like this, very safe to operate, or even one hand. It's uh, the nice thing about this, you can operate it quite a distance away from you, and it's still going to do a really good job. Solid, and this again is Makita, and you're probably saying, boy, Alan, you've got a lot of Makita tools. Um, Okay, and I'm going to say something and bear this in mind, they are not supplying me with anything. I wish they were, but um, Makita makes good quality tools. Uh, good professional quality tools that I've had around. Again, this tool, I think I bought it in maybe 2007, 2008, and uh, it's been working just fine. It hasn't given me one minute of uh, grief the whole time I've had it. Um, I did lend it out once, and uh, here's what happened. Um, oh, I can't see it right now, but the power cord was clipped. These are the things that happen. I'll be talking about lending tools out a little bit later in the video. But yes, uh, Makita, good quality name. This is tool number five. Tool number six is a router. So in this case, this is a little table I made for the router. Uh, comes in really handy. You know, uh, the router is a really safe tool as long as you keep your fingers away from this cutting edge. So the router, of course, doesn't have to be in a little table like this. In fact, probably a good 50% of the time I'm operating the router without 
supports like that. I'm just operating it as you see right here. So this is a Porter cable and this is probably one of the better routers you're going to get, you know, at a medium price point. Um, I like to have my routers, let me see if I can show you here. I'll just remove the base. So if you can bring it in tight there, you can see that bit is actually a half inch bit. So that, that the shank of this bit is a half inch in diameter. So there's two basic sizes you'd get. You'd get half inch like this or quarter inch. Typically you see most people with quarter inch shanks. I like the half inch shank because when I was an apprentice, I had a router and I had a quarter inch shank and the shank broke. There was uh, some sort of quality issue with the steel and it just snapped off. Um, and it's it sort of uh, said to me, hey, that's least that's not going to happen with a half inch. There are only a couple of bucks more to, to go half inch. And um, yeah, I've always been really happy to have that little extra strength because this thing is spinning really, really fast. Now, it's a very safe tool, as I said, because typically you've got two hands, two hands holding the router, so it really can't cut you. Uh, but it is very dangerous if you put your hand anywhere near the edge. Handy, handy tool. You've, this is a round over bit I have in it right now, but with the straight cutter, that you've seen me use when I've been doing all the scarf joints. It was this router doing all the work. Um, I've had this router probably since the, mm, let's think about this, uh, the early 90s, again, last century. Look at it, it's still in great shape. I haven't even changed the brushes on it and it has seen a lot of action. This router, on top of doing all kinds of kitchen cabinets and a number of houses, it has also built three boats. So good quality tool. Again, Porter Cable isn't supporting me. Wish they were, but um, great quality tool. Can't, can't beat a good quality tool. And we've gone through the six basic tools that you need to build a 650, but the bonus tool is this. It's a multi-tool. And um, you know, I've, this is the first one I ever bought. I don't know much about them. So I didn't go with a overly expensive tool because I, I don't know, I guess I didn't have a lot of respect for it, but I, I've changed my mind on that. This uh, is such a handy tool. I've been so impressed. Um, I've got a cutter in here right now and that cutter will get into all kinds of areas because of the angle. I can get it right down to flush and to remove uh, pieces of wood. I actually use this to remove part of a ring frame so I could put the um, foundation of the mast in just a couple of weeks ago. Very, very handy. And not only can it make cuts, but you can switch that up now and put this in, a nice little sanding device that'll get right into corners and very, very handy. I've been using that in the last week. Great tool. And then I saw this on sale. It's a just a collection of all these different things that you know you can you can cut with this. Um, some of these I haven't even looked at. There's a that's those are saw teeth. All different sandpapers. Uh, these replacement uh, cutters. Different different teeth patterns. Just really handy to have. And it's not an expensive tool. Now this is a corded version and they're not expensive. You can also get cordless versions which tend to be a little bit pricey. But uh, great tool. If, um, you know, if I didn't have it, how would I have handled that? I would have had to use a saw, a router, and a chisel. But with this tool, it just replaced that. And I just can't really say enough about it, you know. You, things keep changing you know and you've got to change with it and that's what this tool is i know it's been out probably much longer than um you know five or ten years but it really only came on my radar in the last couple of years and that's why i call this tool number seven the bonus tool so rovers at this point i just want to sum up by saying 
always try to get the best tool you possibly can. But a little further than that, don't lend your tools out. Don't leave them out in the rain. And I've learned all this stuff the hard way. And if you buy the best tool you possibly can, not only will you be happier with the tool and it'll last you so much longer and do much better work, uh, the likelihood is you're going to be less inclined to abuse that tool because you paid more for it. You'll look after it better. As far as lending goes, you know, you, you always end up in that situation where someone needs it and you lend it to them. Now, generally, before I lend it to someone, I give them a little speech on the tool. I, I show them how I use it and how I'd like it to come back to me and all the things not to do to abuse it. Uh, on the job site with professionals, I've been appalled the way they have treated my tools. I've had my tools dropped off scaffold, you know, I've had uh, tools abused in other ways. I don't get it, you know, I, I would never do that to someone's tools and you should make it part of your ethos to make sure that that tool that you borrow comes back exactly how you lent it, how it was lent out in the first place. Now at this point, uh, Rovers, I just want to say Thanks for watching and forge your own adventure. Well, the Wave Rover patrons, with their pledges of support, really do make the creation of these videos possible. Now, if you'd like to know more about Wave Rover's patron page and Benefactors Bulkhead, I have links to both those pages in the video description. Now another way to help Wave Rover, and it doesn't cost you a dime, is by sharing our content on your social media. So now, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Give us one more.